Hey everyone, this is Cynical Doc, and I am once again bringing you an audio commentary for WC Replays. I, it's been quite a while since I've done this, and um, we're going to see how well I still have it, and whether or not I still have it. So hopefully you enjoy this uh, audio commentary. I know I'm trying to think I've been gone since about November of last year. I've been playing World of Warcraft. I'm starting to get back into Warcraft 3 again, and uh, I'm going to see what I can do here. Um, this replay that I have is Boo versus Suboshi, and it's from Akon 5. And this is a LAN game. I'm sure some of you know that. If not, well, um, now you do. Just to tell you a little bit about myself now that I think about it, in case you guys don't remember me, um, I am an undead player. I started off on the site as a shoutcaster, did a couple of audio commentaries here and there. Um, I'm not the greatest player in the world, but I pride myself on two things. One, being able to talk really, really fast when I need to, if you remember my shoutcasts. And two, um, I think I'm pretty decent at analyzing a game and being able to tell you um, why something worked, why it didn't work, and you know, any, picking out any strengths and weaknesses, sort of that idea. And this is basically what I'm going to try and do here, and I'm going to try and look at this mostly from the undead standpoint. Uh, from what I've been told, gameplay hasn't changed too much since I've left the game, so uh, hopefully we won't have any problems with that. Anyway, um, if you can get this replay loaded up, and I pause it actually at the three minute mark, since I'm not going to go too much into build orders or anything here, there's really no point in starting it before that. And um, if you don't have it loaded at the three minute mark, then just pause the audio, get it there, and then you can restart the audio. Anyway, um, I believe I was told by Epic Zero that this was game two of the match between Boo and Suboshi, and I don't remember who won game one, but I'll look it up and see if I can remember to tell you that at the end of the audio commentary in case you're wondering. Um, anyway, if you can get the replay unpaused in three, two, one, unpause. Uh, just so you guys know, I'm actually going to be looking at this from the standpoint of Boo, um, known in this replay actually as uh, PG Goldeneye. And uh, I'm going to have the Fog of War off, so I'm going to be able to watch what's going on with the Orc player, Suboshi, at the same time. One of the things to uh, look at in this is the f just the idea that uh, Boo here has gone with the Crypt Lord first. And if anyone remembers, uh, Crypt Lord is one of my favorite heroes for the Undead. I actually created an entire strategy based around Crypt Lord. Um, at lower levels of play, when I still was playing in low to mid levels, it was rather effective versus most races. And I've actually seen a couple of higher level players try it every now and then, but, you know, to better or worse results than my own. Anyway, it's strange to see the Crypt Lord first, simply because of the fact that, as you mostly know, the Death Knight is kind of necessary for its healing, and also for its ability to harass not so much an orc, but against other races such as human. And what you can notice here, if you take a look at Suboshi's, he's going to be fast teching, and he's eventually going to be going up to Bestiary, which is very common especially against um, undead going with grunts and raiders because of the ability to stop the fiends where they are. The grunts can then beat the crap out of them and um, so forth. One of the things I'm going to point out here is you can see Suboshi attacking Boo's base is timing. And the timing of this attack is great. He's got a couple of grunts, he's got his wolves, and he's able to hit Boo at a time that he's teching. This means that you know, take out a an acolyte or two you have to make Boo make a decision. Whether he wants to cancel the tech and lose those resources, or if he wants to continue and just wait until he can replace that Acolyte. So here you can see that Tsuboshi porting out actually missed one of his grunts. That's going to hurt him a little bit, but not too much. you got to figure you're losing 200 gold for a grunt plus 3 food. And then here you've got halfway through your tech for Boo, and he's only got 4 Acolytes. So I mean, this is more of, you know, personal choice. Do I go with a tech or do I, you know, cancel it? At this point, I would do what Boo is doing here. I would continue the tech, finish it off, get that acolyte back out there as soon as possible. Also, during the attack, it's not so much the idea that, you know, you managed to kill an acolyte. Even if you didn't kill an acolyte, those acolytes weren't mining during the entire attack. And if Suboshi were able to get out of there losing only his teleport scroll and not the grunt, then he would have, you know, had a pretty significant impact that way anyway. So you can see he's just going to be doing a little bit of creeping, and what Boo here is doing is he's using the Crypt Lord with Beetles and Impale. And you can see that he has Impale in a little bit. But the Beetles are going to be 
really effective here because they're your meat shield, especially early on. They try and keep the grunts and the wolves away from the fiends. Later on, not so effective, especially if the um, or players decide to start going with the wind riders or wyverns, however you want to call them. So you can see Suboshi's going to go and he's going to try and see if he can take out another accolade. This time with you know just a farseer and a couple of wolves. The reason he went with just the farseer here is you can see if you check out the hero is he's got a staff of teleportation. He's got a uh, speed scroll and he's also got a uh, cloak of shadows. However, unfortunately for him, he starts to teleport here and impale at a perfect time, manages to get the surround right against that tem Tomb of Relics. Not exactly the greatest place for the Farseer to start his teleport. Tries to Shadow Meld. Unfortunately, we have Boo that's picked up a uh, Sentry Ward, so he drops that down and sees the Farseer. If you don't have the Sentry Ward, Dust of Appearance will work perfectly fine there. Um, to be honest with you, I probably would have bought the Dust of Appearance just to save that Sentry Ward for later whether I wanted to stick it in uh, Suboshi's base or in some other type of advantageous position. As you can see now, once again the whole timing issue here. You have Suboshi who is going with the quick tech. He's getting raiders now from his beast fury. He's getting his second hero. I'm sorry, he's actually getting his... he's already got his second hero which is a Pandaren Brewmaster. But now he's going to start putting up a, an expansion. And one of the key things with the Crypt Lord that you really should do, especially if you're going Beatles, or actually, I mean, the Beatles is necessary to do this, but is to continually keep scouting. And the Beatles are great for this, especially level 2 and level 3, because they can they can burrow. Unfortunately, Boo's using them for a meat shield, so they're kind of necessary, necessary to keep with the army. And here you can see he goes with the Tinker Second. Now, most likely you're thinking, well, what the hell is he thinking? Why would you want to go Tinker Second? Well, what Boo's thinking here is, you know, Pocket Factory, which you're going to see is what he went first, you use the pocket factor to try and act as a second meat shield, along with the clockwork goblins. And you got to figure, Boo basically knows that Tsuboshi is going to go with raiders. Um, I'm not quite positive, but I think he may have done this in the first game, so he kind of knows what he's up against. It's very common for orcs to do this anyway. So those clockwork goblins have a uh, normal attack. So they can actually, you know, whittle away at those raiders pretty quickly because they have they do decent damage, and then when they explode, they do even better damage. So here we've got, you know, excellent position for Boo. He's set up that factory behind his units. He's going to try and ward off the army while picking off, you know, the little units that are coming out of the uh, bases now. Along with, you know, the uh, bestiary, he's going to try and take this out. And he comes close to it, but he doesn't quite get there. So one of the things that Suboshi probably should have done is bring his army around to the left of Boo's and hit those fiends from behind because what's really preventing him from getting in the position here is that pocket factory and the beetles. And as you can see, Boo's going to do good, a good job here of keeping those beetles in front of the fiends because you don't want the, those grunts getting to them. And here you've got grunts and the raiders coming behind. You're going to have Suboshi trying, or I'm sorry, Suboshi's going to try and you know get to those raiders or the uh, fiends with the grunts kind of move the fiends off the side, stick the um, the beetles in there to try and prevent the uh, normal attacks from beating on the medium armor of the crypt fiends. Here I think Boo makes a little bit of a mistake. He's doing the right thing about focusing on the grunts, because the raiders aren't too dangerous except for the ensnare. They don't do too much damage, but he's waiting too long to take out that grunt with the lightning shield, and it's really hurting him. The other thing that I think he kind of made a mistake on here is that I mean, it was a good idea to teleport because he was definitely he was outnumbered and unit wise he didn't have the correct unit matchup that he needed for that position in a battle. But what he did was he kept running his fiends around trying to get them to stay alive. Unfortunately, because of the setup, there was nowhere for them to go. What he probably should have done was just continue to focus on the grunts that were pretty low health. So he'd lose the fiends still like he did there. I think he lost two during the teleport, but he probably would have taken a grunt or two with him. Anyway. Um, as you can see, the expansion for Suboshi is just finishing now, and Boo's got the idea that he's going to expand now as well. Or, I'm sorry, his expansion is actually just finishing. I knew it was coming, I just missed when he started building it. Um, this is really important, because now he's capable of keeping up uh, resource-wise with Suboshi. And if the orc gets ahead of you resource-wise, you're going to be in a lot of trouble if you haven't gotten to destroyers at the same time as that expansion has gone on. Most likely that's not going to happen, especially on a map this big. Actually, I don't even know why I said that. I'm just kind of talking out of my ass with that one. Uh, anyway, 
just the idea that you know you want to try and be able to match the orc's income because once he gets that expansion up, he'll get up second beast area. He can start cranking out wyverns then. And if you've been taking or losing quite a few fiends to these raiders and grunts, because you know whether you try to run or you try to teleport, you're going to lose fiends because the ensnare is going to hold them in place and grunts are just going to beat the crap out of them. Another big problem is that speed scroll that's going to be able to get those grunts into position awfully quickly. So one of the things you need to do is keep up your resources. That way you can keep up as large of an army as the orc can. Because if you're, you know, losing units, technically speaking, your fiends are the cry or the uh, natural counter to the wyverns. But in smaller numbers, even in equal numbers, you're going to have a hard time taking care of them. So you have to try and keep the number of fiends you have up, which is exactly what Boo's trying to do here with, you know, having the two meat shields. He's got the beetles and the clockwork goblins. But he's also keeping up with the resources as well. And you see that's going to really help him out later on. Um, one of the big things that you have to do is, especially looking at the strategy that Tsuboshi's got here, you got to keep your expansion protected, especially in the position that it's at right now. You cannot allow it to, you know, just beat the gold mine, because you get like four or five raiders in there, and that's finished. You can't teleport to it without a necropolis. You're not going to have any type of defense. With the spirit towers, you might be able to slow them down, take down one or two of the raiders while you run your army back. The map's not too big, but on a smaller map, you might be able to get away with, you know, one tower, maybe not even a tower. So, what we're looking at here is we've got, you know, just pumping out even more fiends, keeping that meat shield. We're at level 2 beetles now, level 4 crypt lord, he's got impale. He's in a pretty good position. The nice part about impale with this, as opposed to going carapace, crypt lord's already got a lot of hit points. Impale's going to be able to stop the army and get yours in it. That just proved it right there. What he managed to do, he impaled the front line of the orc, moves the fiends 